Well, bless the Lord, we, we're dealing with something very, very important in this, uh, in this part of the series in Living Faith. And oftentimes it's not something that people really focus on in this 21st century church. You don't hardly hear a message on the will of God because nobody, not many people I would think, really want to know the will of God. All right, life has escalated in the past, uh, you know, 6,000 years, almost 6,000 years. Life has, has escalated to a point right now where we, humanity has never passed this way before. Humanity has not passed. There are many things that have, are of old, like Solomon said, there's nothing new under the sun, okay? Everything that's happening has already happened. But he was talking about more of creation and more of uh, uh, human behavior, more philosophical, okay? But what I'm talking about is the end times. As far as the end times are concerned, the last days are concerned, humanity never passed this way before. This is the first time humanity is going down this road. And it's not like God kept us ignorant of what's going to happen. It's all in the scriptures. But as I'm saying, if you're in the light of the last days and what we are studying, when you look at living faith, you know, we've got to have to synchronize our lives <coughs> with the will of God. We have to do that in these last days. So we understand that the governing power of, of God's uh, will in faith, we've got to understand God's governing power. Because God's will governs faith. I'm not talking, not talking about a child in faith. I'm talking someone that has matured, someone that has been walking, you know, this walk of faith for many years. Well, sad to say this, there are many people that are, that are very old Christians, you know, but still very young, still very immature. Their faith has hardly grown anywhere has gone anywhere, you know, and some of them don't even know what faith is, they don't even know how to use it. But you must understand that it is God's will to the mature mind, to the scholar of God's word, to the one that lives by the word, you realize that God's will governs your faith at that level. So I'm speaking now to mature people. Now we read the last session from James chapter 4, and I told you that, uh, you know, the scriptures can get really rough. In fact, this teaching can get really rough, but you're going to have to rough it out. You understand? You know, like metal sharpening metal. So this is important. doesn't matter how difficult and hard it sounds, but the Word of God has power to cleanse. It has power to cleanse. God washes us with the water of His Word. So if we try to ignore these messages and say, no, this is too hard for me, it's something I don't want to hear now, then you are walking on a dangerous path. Because it's God's word is the only thing that can correct you, that can wash you, cleanse you, and bring correction to you. Are you listening? So we can, we can have selective hearing, but selective hearing is not going to take us far. Because some people have selective hearing. They only want to hear about, you know, certain things. They only want to hear about the love of God. They only want to hear about the provisions of God. They only want to hear about prosperity. You know, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong in that. But that's the, that is not a, a, a balanced diet, if you understand what I'm saying. Because the wheels can be coming off in our lives, you know, and flying out this way and that way, but we're still focusing and we have a selective hearing for only certain messages we want to hear. But I want to tell you God's word is wholesome. And you live by God's word and walk by God's word and study God's word and you realize God's will, how God's will will govern, his, govern that faith in your life. And I tell you what, you will go to places that other people can only dream of. Are you listening? So let's read this portion of scripture again from James chapter 4, verse 13 uh, through to 17. Look here, uh, you who say, today or tomorrow, we are going to a certain town and will stay there a year. We will do business there and make a profit. Verse 14. How do you know what your life will be like tomorrow? Your life is like the morning fog. It's here a little while, then it's gone. Verse 15. 
what you ought to say is, if the Lord wants us to, if the Lord's will this is, we will live and do this or do that. Next verse. Otherwise, you are boasting about your own plans, and all such boasting is evil. Verse 17. Remember, it is sin to know what you ought to do and then not do it. I've found many, many, many people have stumbled over this stumbling block. I have found that, and I told you in the last session that this scripture governed my life, my whole life as a Christian. It, it, it always was on my mind. All right, And it's something that I discovered very early as a Christian. Remember, it is sin to know what you ought to do and then not do it. How many of you know that sin has a repercussion? That, that means there is always a, res a result to sin. And it's not a positive thing. It will be a negative thing. So what is James really talking about here? What is he talking about? I'll tell you what, if you, look at the, if you can look at it uh, uh, wholesomely, if you look at all the scriptures together, James is talking about people being in the will of God. Right? So the will of God is your destiny in this life. So what's he saying? He's saying if you remove your destiny, if you remove the will of God from your life, then what is your life? It's like a mist. It's like a fog. It's like a vapor. So in other words, when you see the mist in the morning, and then it's gone. When you uh, see fog, and then the sun comes out, fog is gone. And you know what the bad thing about it is that it leaves no trace that it was there. You understand? When fog is gone, you don't know it was there. It's gone. The same even with mist. Same with vapor. Once vapor is gone, you can't know, there's no trace that it was there. That's what he's saying. He's saying if you live your life like this, aimlessly, without the will of God, then you're living like a, your life is like a vapor. So even you're here today and tomorrow you're gone, nobody will know that you were here. Or nobody will know that you were here. You're not leaving behind what God you know, sent you to deliver, basically. You're not doing the will of God. Are you listening? So we, we can get so brought up in this world, in different cultures and different family cultures, and get lost in those cultures. But I tell you what, it takes a sober-minded person to come back and ask God, God, what is your will for my life to start with? I am waiting to hear what is your will for my life. And that's what he's saying. So to that individual, I can guarantee you one thing. Everything they do thereafter will be faith governed by the will of God. I can guarantee you because that's quite a high level. And I'm just hoping that people will get there. You understand? Now, doing the will of God is not me doing what I want to do. Doing the will of God is me doing what God wants me to do. That's my destiny. You understand? Me doing what God wants me to, be, uh, to do, that is my destiny. So, in other words, he's saying in a little thing like even a business venture or, or, or anything, relocation to another city or another town or changing your jobs or you know, doing something, whatever it has to do with your life, it all boils down to that. Where you can go before God and ask, Lord, is this your will? Is it a good thing for me to do? Is it the right thing for me to do? And, and, and you know, it, it comes down to that. It comes down to the small things. And because I tell you what, every day we make decisions. Every day people make decisions. And you know what? Some people make rashful decisions uh, related to huge things in their lives. Big things. I mean, they do not... They do not even spend a moment thinking. If it's a good idea and someone else was successful in doing it, our, the whole lot of them, the whole lot, I mean, you get a whole bunch of people who will follow down that trail and try and do the same thing to try and get the same success. There are many people in, in this world today, even in ministry, if you sit and talk to them, they'll tell you they did exactly what God wants them to do because they asked and they waited. You understand? They asked and they waited what was the will of God, if it was the will of God for them to go to a certain city. 
People are relocating all the times around the world. And based on what? Based on what they want. That is why I can tell you the large percentage of people in the body of Christ are living out of the will of God. Just because it, it was their passion. Your passion is not necessarily God's will. Are you listening? Your passion is something that you, you like. And, 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 and not, it's not often that God's will is, is, is enveloped in your passion. Your passion could be just a selfish thing. As something that you like, something that you want to do. But I tell you what, when God's will governs your faith, your life is completely, completely different. You must understand that it breaks down stress. Because you're waiting for God's answer, you're waiting for God's will, you're waiting for God to lead you. Are you listening? And you will follow that leadership. Because you know the Holy Spirit is there. You must understand this, the Holy Spirit has been given to you, He has been assigned to you for your destiny. You're not the boss over your destiny. There is someone that is superior to you who understands your destiny better, better than you do. But the question is, are you willing you know, to sit down and hear him? Hear what he has to say. And you know what? People do not like to hear anything apart from what they're looking to hear or waiting to hear. Some people have very itchy ears. So everything you, go, you tell them must be in agreement with what they want to do or what they're thinking they must do. They're just looking for people to agree with them. And that's not right even. I think the first thing you need to do is get the green light from the Lord. Are you listening? You get the green light, you pray, you consult with the Lord. You consult with the Holy Spirit. You sit down and you consult with Him. Say, Lord, this is, this is what I'm planning to do. You know, and uh, I want to know whether this is your will and... Uh, and then what you do, you spend a lot of time listening. Don't be in a hurry. If you never hear from him, there is a reason why he didn't answer you. Maybe the timing is not right. Okay? And eventually he might get the answer to you. So you just got to have to wait because God's will is precious. And you know when God's will moves you, faith moves you. When God's will moves you in that direction, faith moves you. So you have to be patient enough. You've got to have faith. You understand? And you've got to listen. You've got to have a listening ear. Now the sad thing is not everybody has a listening ear. That's why Jesus kept on saying, He who has ears to listen. He who has ears to listen. Book of Revelation. He who has ears to listen. What the Spirit is saying to the churches. Why? Because not everybody has ears to listen to what the Spirit is saying. They are not concerned. They don't care what the Spirit is saying. They are just doing what they want and they what they believe. This is what this man is addressing. He says, your whole life is about destiny. Your whole life is about purpose. Your whole life is about the will of God. So when you keep asking the Lord for His approval in certain things, you might get His disapproval, which is also His will. But the times you might get is approval. So each time you get an approval from God, you're going one step further in your destiny. Because everything that he approves of is going in that same direction where he needs you to be. Now let me ask you a question. How many people do you know right now that are right where God wants them to be? They are, I mean, they are accurately positioned. Do you know what my prayer is every day? Exactly the same thing. I pray that every single day. I pray that. I pray, Lord, Holy Spirit, I want to be exactly where you want me to be. I want to be, you know, I want to walk with accuracy before you. So if I'm not at the place that I'm supposed to be, take me, hold me by my hand and lead me. I want to get there. Every single day of my life, I pray this. That is why it doesn't matter what happens. You'll notice I'm always stable. You understand? Because I have so much of confidence in the Holy Spirit's leadership that I know He would, you know, that He is leading me, guiding me, and I depend on Him like I depend on food. I think I depend on Him more, really. Because food's not like number one priority. He is more than a priority to me. So in other words, I pray every single day, Lord, Am I in the right place? Am I, am I accurate with you? Is there, am I missing out? Am I backward? You know, in this, uh, uh, is my understanding right here? 
you know, what is your will for this? And I, that is the reason why I have so much knowledge about what he's gonna, is about to do. It's because I keep asking. I'm not guessing. I'm asking and he keeps talking to me. Now imagine if you take the same mentality and bring it into your personal life every day. Now I know sometimes frustration will settle in because you might be maybe in a job you don't like. You may be doing things that you don't like. And you're just hoping that life will get better f for you and you know it will be a kind of a life that you would really love. All of those things are the things that govern us every single day. But if you can just take a, stop, uh, take a step back and say, Lord, what is your will? What did you send me here to do, Father? What is your will for me? Can I, can I get to an understanding of what that is? What, what am I here for? My, I don't want my life to be like a fog. I'm here and then I'm gone. Nobody knew I was here. I didn't even make a little dent in anyone's life or in anything in this life. And I never leave behind any trace that I was here on the earth. When I'm gone, people just mourn that I'm gone to heaven and I'm there, I'll come and stay there with you. But after a little while, there's nothing yet they can say, oh, wait, this, this is what this person did. You know? But you know what? There are many, many, many people that have left their dent behind on this earth. That is why the earth is the way it is right now. God has used men and he has used women. And they've caused major, major things to happen on the earth. Thank God for them. Thank God for them. And I know, I tell you what, many of them, they didn't stumble into, the, into God's will. They asked purposefully, God, what is your will? How do I do this? How do I do that? And they found out that this is what God wants them to do. And then they got into that place. They went in to the, into God's word and they got information and they stabilized their faith. And I tell you what, when the, the faith was now being governed by the will of God, and you see how they changed the world. All of these great inventors, some of the things we enjoy that was invented by these people. But I tell you what, the greatest of the greatest inventors in the world are the people who went before God, in case you didn't know that. The greatest inventors in the world were people that belonged to Jesus Christ. They were not worldly pagan people. No, no, no. These were Christians. Everything you, every major invention on planet Earth was by, done, done by a child of God, by somebody who took time, by someone who had a prayer life, by someone that was seeking God's face. You, know, you understand? So there are many, many people, I don't have time to name them to you, but I'm telling you what, the, the earth has, uh, has changed and transformed uh, because of these people. Are you listening? Now the other thing that, uh, that James was talking about here, and I know this is quite rough, but it's true. You know, when we achieve something on our own, we have something to gloat about. You understand? When we achieve something on our own, we have something to show off. That's what he's basically saying. And he's saying that kind of boasting is evil. That kind of boasting does not bring any glory to God. But when a, when a person is living in the will of God, and will, the will of God is, is governing their faith, and they're accomplishing things, they realize at the end of the day, that God did this through them. And they're not just saying it as a cliche. Christians are too good to use cliches everywhere and bluff people. But you know, there are people, those people that are really moving in faith by the will of God. You'll notice those people don't talk too much. Those, those people are not looking out to get any glory. Given an opportunity, they'll give Jesus all the glory. But they are the genuine ones, you understand? They understand God's will and how God's will governs their faith. So let's look at the first step in the right direction. What is the first step in the right direction? In order for us to use our faith, to get into the will of God, and let the will of God govern our faith, so that, you know, we do understand, we have got a lot of foundation stones in place already. Because we understand everything comes from God. We understand every good gift and every perfect gift comes down from Him. We understand all of that. We know that our God supplies all of our needs according to his riches in glory through Christ Jesus. We know all of that. You understand? So in other words, we've come so far already with an understanding of scriptures. So we can come down to the point and say, Lord, what is the first step forward in the right direction? Just go to Romans 12 verse 2. Verse 2.
See what it says, so direct. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. Don't copy the behavior and the customs of this world, the traditions of this world, the culture of this world. Are you listening? So, <laughs> so many people have already done that. They have adopted all the culture and behavior patterns of this world. Christians, I'm talking about people that call themselves Christians, children of God. And that's what leads them to a life of corruption. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you, the way you think. You understand? So if you start by thinking God's will, then you'll start by praying and asking for God's will. Then you'll be depending on the Lord to manifest His will and to inform you, to educate you regarding His will. So what he would do, he would, God will transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Not the way you dress, not by what kind of colon, colon you use or spray or what these things people use. You know, people think that these things really, really make them. No, no, it's the way you think. You understand? It's the way you think. So if you're a person that's not thinking straight, if you're a person that is already conformed to this worldly behavior and to the customs of this world, obviously your thinking is not right. So this is the first thing God wants to do. He wants to make you a new person by changing the way you think. Now listen to the next part. Then... Then, then you will learn to know God's will for you. Which is good and pleasing and perfect. Are you listening? So there's a, there is a transition that must take place. So firstly, we start by the transformation of our mind. So we start thinking differently. Now, you might be, you know, in the company of a million people, but you're not thinking like that million people are thinking. You might be part of a family, but you could be st sticking out like a sore thumb because your mindset is completely different, completely different from the rest of them. You might be working in a company, and you might be completely different because you are thinking completely different. Now, you must understand when th things happen around you, your response will tell the people around you that you are different. Because everyone is responding in, 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 you know, in, the, in the customs of this world, according to the customs, according to the behavior of this world. Everybody is responding. But when you respond, your response will be different. Why? Because you're not thinking on that level. You're thinking on a higher level. Can you see already the change has started? You're not thinking like them. You know, God help us. Because people are so, they can be so easily influenced by other people. And especially when the whole crowd is going one direction, everybody wants to go. And without even asking a simple question, why? Simple question, why? That's all. And just stand there in your position and ask, why? Why are we going this way? Are you listening? You must understand you're an individual. You have your own power of choice. You have your own mind. And God wants to change humanity one person at a time. How is he going to do that? He's going to start by changing the way you think. Then you will know, learn to know what God's will for you. What is God's will for you? Which is good and pleasing and perfect. God's will for you is good, pleasing, and perfect. Now, take time to get there. But you've got to get started somewhere. You understand? You've got to get started somewhere. So, in other words, uh, 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 take yourself out of that equation. You're working amongst these people. Start to separate the way you think. Don't agree with everything they say. Because people would speak from their understanding what they believe, what they know, and they would say what everybody else is saying. You know, people became more clever now than they were. You know that? 
because they got YouTube, they got Facebook, they got WhatsApp, they got all that. They gone very clever now. You know, so even when you're standing and talking to them about something, they're busy googling what you what you tell them. <laughs> I've had that happen to me so many times. And then they tell me, you're right. How do you know they were Googling what I'm saying? So one person called me inside after a while. He said, me, your knowledge is amazing. Where are you getting all of this knowledge from? I mean, you say things and we're checking you out. Well, I'm a student. You understand? I'm a student. I love knowledge. I will do anything to get knowledge. You understand? So even if I'm sitting to watch something on television, it'll be knowledgeable things. It'll be something that I can learn from. So that's what keeps me going. I'm not a kind of person looking for some entertainment. I'm not an entertainment person. You understand? I'm not looking for entertainment. I'm looking for knowledge. So he asked me, how did you, I mean, your knowledge is amazing. You, have, you know so much of things. And I'm not taking any feather now to put on my cap. I'm just saying this to you. The people will know if you are knowledgeable or not. But let me tell you the same thing. On the other side, the worldly people are also knowledgeable now because they saw something on YouTube. Or they saw something, they got one video on WhatsApp. Or they, they tell you things as if they've experienced it in the meantime. They're just, you know, telling you what they, what they heard. They have no idea about those things. So where we, do we start in this whole thing? We keep our minds away from that. We try not to get conformed to those things. Now, let me give you another tip here, quickly. Do not open every video that comes to you on WhatsApp or whatever. Some of you have a bad habit and do not watch and listen to everything. I just delete it. I don't want that knowledge. You know, if there's a header or a footer, I'll read that and say, wow, I don't want that. Because I'm selective in the knowledge that I want. Because there's a lot of nonsense that's going out there. Are you listening? And what is that doing? It's infiltrating your mind. And God wants to renew your mind. He wants to renew your mind. He's going to, he wants to change the way you think. But the more you keep watching these things, the more you following this person on, uh, where they follow them? On Facebook, yeah. The more you, man, are you a follower or are you a leader? Then who are you following? Can you see they're, trying to, they're taking leaders and making, them, making followers out of leaders? Who are you following on, uh, on that social media? And why are you following that person? Is there any real reason that's helping you to change your mind and transform your mind so that you can think differently? Or are you just doing it because everybody else do it because you've got this social media platform? Can you see that? We're like a bunch of cows. One cow break their fence and go, all the cows will just follow and go. Huh? Don't you think so? Don't you think we should be individuals? God wants to change our mind. He wants to change the way we think. Why? Because He wants us to know what His will is. The good, pleasing and the perfect will. Which is ours that coming from God. So when you leave this earth, I'm not praying that you leave this earth anytime soon, but I'm just saying... <laughs> When you leave this earth, you make sure you leave your dent behind. People must know that you was here. And the only time the people will know that you was here is if you are living out God's will. If you're living out your own will, it'll be like a vapor. It's here today, it's gone tomorrow. But if you're living out God's will and you are now thriving to come to that place of understanding God's good, pleasing and perfect will, Wow, by the time you leave this earth, it will not be the same because you have done your part.